Hi, I'm Bob from Plastic Pipe Shop and in this video we're going to have a look at the different types of non-return valves or check valves as they're sometimes called that we can get and what the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of valve are. We'll start off with this valve. This is a double union valve. It's got a union either end of it. The nice thing about that is it means if we ever need to service it, we ever need to get access to it, we can unscrew the unions, we can take the centre of it out without having to cut our pipe at all and then we can have a look inside and, uh, and we can see what's going on if it's blocked or anything. I'll take this apart just so you can have a look at it. So as you can see this valve has a fairly strong spring inside it and then has this little cone bit on the end of it which sits over the spring. So our water flows down from this end, it pushes our cone, our water pressure pushes our cone down into the valve. As it pushes it down, it releases it from this EPDM rubber gasket here and the water flows around the outside of it. Okay, so it pushes it down. There's a couple of things we need to note. First of all, um, we need a fairly decent head, a metre, metre and a half head minimum, to be able to start pushing that, pushing that spring down. Okay, if we haven't got at least a metre or metre and a half head, we're not going to have enough pressure to push against that spring there. Okay, I'm pushing reasonably hard there. The other thing is, if you imagine if we had bits of grass or something like that, which was in our water, as it comes down here, it's going to get tangled around our spring and eventually the debris is all going to build up around it and that's going to block and we're going to have to service it and take it out. This little one here hasn't got a spring in it at all. It's much the same as this. We'll just open it up and have a look. Again, here's the gasket that sits on the top of it. And then we have just a little smooth ball shape which rattles up and down inside here. Now as you can see, much the same as the spring one, if we have a look here, you can see there's not actually much space for the water flow to go round the ball inside. And that's going to give us quite a bit of head loss, quite a bit of friction loss in our system. It's the same with this one as well. Let me just show you this one again. That was a ball which is going through, so that's a, a two inch ball on there. But actually all that water has got to flow around the outside of here. Okay, so again, it's quite a lot of head loss, quite a lot of friction loss to try and force that much water around the outside here. So our ones with the springs can be mounted in any angle at all, they can be vertical, horizontal, as long as they're mounted so that the flow arrow on the side of the valve is in the right direction for your flow, then it's going to operate properly. But because it's got a spring, it can sit that way, it can sit that way, it can sit whatever way you want. A valve like this is relying on gravity rather than a spring. Now, one advantage that, that has is you need a lot less pressure, virtually no pressure at all, to move that ball. But the disadvantage it has is it can only be mounted vertically. So if we're using it after a pump, then it has to be mounted vertically so the ball naturally drops down because there's no spring to push it down at all. Then as soon as the pump starts, it'll lift up and the flow will start to go around it. These are also often used as foot valves on suction lines. Suction's a real hard thing to get right, especially if you're using a valve with a spring. That's going to add an awful lot of suction lift required onto your pump, and it might, might even stop your pump working. So if we hold this upside down, we imagine our pump is sitting at the top here, and we're sucking it up from a tank. Once the pump is running, it'll lift that ball inside, it'll start to suck up. As soon as the pump stops running, the weight of the water is going to push that ball down and it'll stop the water flowing back into the pump. So if it's on the suction side, you want one without a spring. If it's on the pressure side, then you're usually better with one with a spring, unless it's a very low pressure, in which case, again, one without the spring. So other types of uh, non-return valves or check valves. This is one that overcomes that big friction loss. We've got our two inch bore here. If we look through here, I'm going to lift. It's got a flap inside here which flaps up and down here. Now it's, it moves really freely. There's no springs on it or anything like that. Uh, there's no metal parts on it either. And you can see if I lift that up, it's probably about two thirds of a full bore which is going through there. And that's in comparison to these where the water had to take that tortuous route 
around the cone or the ball on it, so our water is going to flow much more freely through here. So this one works in this direction, so as your water starts flowing down, the valve lifts up, and then as soon as the water stops, the valve shuts and the water pressure here comes back and holds that valve shut. So again, these, are, these ideally are mounted vertically. If you've got quite a high pressure, they can be mounted horizontally as long as you've got a head on this side as well. So for example, if you're pumping from here up into a tank, the moment that pump stops, the water's going to come back from the tank and it's going to push that shut. If you're coming out from here directly into a tank or something like that, it's not going to work. You need to have that back pressure on it for it to work. This is another type of non-return valve. Um, this is one that sits in between two flanges. So either straight in between two PVC flanges, or it can sit on the flange on the outlet of the pump if the pump has a flange on it. Then you have a flange, a PVC flange on the other side, which then goes into your pipe. These are really restrictive on flow. So this is actually for a 63 millimeter pipe or a two inch pipe size. Now we'll have a look at the size of the hole in it. Now remember, that's the size of your two inch pipe there, okay? Now we're going to open this up, that's the size of the hole you've got. So all your flow from this is being restricted down to go through this tiny little gap here. And we have our little flap on the other side here. So it operates in much the same way as this does, except this one gives a much fuller ball flow than something like this. To service, if something like this did become blocked, there's usually a key to go in the top and you can slide it out from between the flanges and then you can slide it back again. For these ones to service, unscrew the stainless steel nuts around the outside, the valve will come apart. The problem with that is there's not unions either side, so you either have to cut your pipe or you have to take your pipe apart at the next possible location you can. If you think that is going to become an issue, it might be better to put a union fitting. See if I've got one here, there you go. A little union fitting which can screw and unscrew either side of the valve and that then means you can take the valve out of service and put the valve back into service. It really depends what your application is as to which is the best non-return valve for you. I would tend to avoid these ones like the plague really. Um, I've used these on pump systems before and they restrict the flow so much they can make a real difference to the amount of water which you're going to get out of your pump. They can really reduce your flow a lot. If I had an option, I'd use one which has a full bore as possible, which is going to give me as true a flow as possible and as least restrictive flow as possible. And uh, if I was using a foot valve, I'd use one of these. I hope that helps and clears things up a little bit. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.